Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 27 of Tactical Crouch. That's right, 27 whole episodes. You have decided to listen to the show for some reason. I am Kick Tripod. With me, of course, is the crew, Volamel and Yiska, of course, and special guest, new, newly christened coach in the Dallas Fuel Organization, Damon. Welcome to the show, man. It's good. I think we've, like, we've kind of been in passing a few times on the super secret discord that we're not allowed to talk about on the show. But besides that, uh, I don't think we've actually officially met. So it's, it's kind of nice to finally put a face to the name. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Let's get it. You just needed a cough break there. So, you know, (laughs) it's ruining a special moment. Oh man. (laughs) I usually, when other people are introducing themselves, I usually walk up and just cough to be like, "Hey, I'm here." Is not allowed. That's impossible. I know. Yes, it what, help? What's up? Does it help when yeah. I say that I had to cough because of heart palpitations? Kind of. Kind of. Okay. Makes yeah, it a I mean, bit. it makes me pity you just a little, a little bit. bit better. Better. I don't think I could actually do that, but I can pity you more. So, um, yeah. there we go. Well, Yiska, since you clearly want the attention here, let me first bring Not it bad. to you. I mean, what have you what have you been up to since our last? It's been like eleven days since our last show. Not much, really. Like using a little bit of the free time that I had after, like, uh, not writing for VP anymore. But I'll. I, I already said last time that I, I'm going to start doing thinking it over again. Now I'm really starting to get I in be- the groove again. I'm I stacking believe episodes you. right now. I don't believe you, but good for you. You can always, you can always uh, just think it over here on the show. If you ever True. want to just always come on over. Joe, what about you, man? What are you up to? Uh, you've got open division and, and contenders going on. I'm sure you're uh, continually uh, working on your mattress cosplay. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a, it's a work in progress. You know, I'm trying really hard. It's a passion project of mine. You know, uh, I'll try to show you guys good mattress cosplays and, you know, please cheer for me. Awesome. Fighting. We'll be there. Fighting. Sweet. Fighting. Good job. <clears throat> so, in other words, totally unexciting weeks. Although, uh, Damon, I'd expect that your last few weeks have probably been pretty exciting. You've made the move from Paris Eternal to Dallas Fuel. You're there now. Congrats. Um, I mean, yeah, tell us, tell us about how, let's talk about that first. That transition had to be kind of, well, you've, you've transitioned now a few times. When, when did you go from Valiant? It, that was mid season, right? So that there are, sorry, in between seasons. Yeah. So this is your first time you've changed coaching mid season. Is that different at all to you? Um, of course, like it, it wasn't really expected to like, uh, do such a transition, even more like just like at the beginning of the season. So um, it was quite a uh, although, but I kind of manage it from the way I was speaking to Paris and eventually to teams that were interested. And then, um, yeah, just figured things out and tried to be ready whenever some things came up and trying to just keep my cool because obviously it wasn't like that. Um, it wasn't an, a common transition. Like it was a really speci- like special moment uh, that was both good, but at the same time that could be bad as well, depending on the conclusion of it. So I'm really grateful that it ended up well and that that has well picked me. Like I, I thank them for the for the trust. Yeah, I mean that has to be kind of huge. So the Dallas Fuel, um, we've set them pretty high in our power rankings. No offense, but we set them higher. I think all of us set them higher than uh, Paris Eternal at the very least. So, um, you know, high expectations here. So we're really excited to see what you get to do um, with the fuel. Um, yes, guy. I know you had some questions though about specifically the transition from Paris to the fuel. Yeah, I think a lot of people. So, okay, there's always like the expectation of what the community has and like how how things are framed and how it's communicated is, of course, very important. Right. So I guess it would be a perfect opportunity to once again point out you weren't fired from your job at Paris Internal. You actually stepped down, right? Yeah, so I reached management in mid stage one. 
um, sharing like my issues with first myself um, as a head coach, and notably for all the factors that was um, concerning to the general manager, the organization itself, and other stuff. So what I wanted first, like coming to this team and trying to build it, I wanted something that would be like ground solid, like a good base for players, but a good base as well for staff. And you can see it um, having like, actually the three of them could be head coach in the team. And ended up like going for this opportunity. I knew that it could be a good experience, a good like uh, result as well, because like, especially Volano and Yuiska, you know, like the course of my career, like I always took a like, risky, oh, actually a new challenge and managed to do it well. But in the end for this one, I knew that it would maybe be the step for uh, the step forward a little bit, like too much. And when it ended up being the case, I just tried to speak. I just tried to not like um, um, destroy everything and just leave at the last minute or don't mm -hmm. like not doing it professionally. I tried to speak to my general manager. After that, I speak to my staff. And after that, I announced to the team. So over the course, it was like, Mid, uh, mid stage one, I spoke to the management. After that, I spoke to Fefe because I really wanted him to like knew about the issue and because I'm really close to him as well. And speaking about all the stuff that I can't really speak about like there, sure. but yeah, every, like everything that I tried to do with Max and Fefe especially. And after that, announcing to the wall staff, speaking to Kyle as well that I'm really close to, Seta as well, just like he's in Finland, so it's kind of hard to make the communication as well. But I, I tried to really create this sort of like good um, amicable path and mm -hmm. not something that would be like bad term. And you can ask Fifi, like he did an interview just today on a, a French broadcast, like everything is good, basically. It's just, I needed to take responsibility for like what I, I was feeling for myself and for the team. And for me, it was the best for me, but for the team especially to just find a, like just leave the team and like try to structure it at least for stage two and everything has been going smoothly because we did it like way before the stage one right. ended up yeah you know, there I was think... like no bad blood like that there were, maybe I, I would have been fired uh, at the end of the season or maybe at stage two like there's a lot of theory or conclusion we could get but it wasn't really the idea mix was trusting me and fifi Carl, and seta wasn't really bothered like with me and my performance, they knew that I had like some issues because like I'm really young. Uh, that doesn't come off naturally, not that it be the social and administrative work coming uh, as a head coach, but like they w really wanted this to work out instead of me trying to live. At least this is what I said. And Fifi announced it publicly on the, the front broadcast. So I don't know, but that was weird. That was a bit painful as well, because obviously I didn't want something that I tried to build from ground zero, but I, at least that was a responsibility I need to take if I didn't feel good. And when I don't feel good in something, I don't want to force it. I just want to like either find a solution. If, if it's not possible, just like get it. That's what it is. Yeah. I think a lot of people would then say, well, if, the, if that position was uh, like past what you felt comfortable with, like m maybe some people would say, well, why not stay in the team and give it give head coach to someone else? But I don't think that is very realistic to do, right? Hierarchies are sort of set in place, and like the way you interact with players to then reshift that into a different. I'm not a fan of that, and I think switching teams is actually then the mm -hmm. best option. It's like right? asking Yiska to take over for me on the show. I, I, would, I, I, would, I would. That I would just happened leave. once. I to would be just fair, be, that, that's... Yeah, that it's did the happen. Least downloaded and the... show of all time. Because yeah, exactly. Maybe because so. we haven't released it, but <laughs> well, it also is completely scuffed and terrible. It's, it's so good. We're gonna make that like we're gonna if we ever do a Patreon, it'll be the first Patreon perk is that you get access to that episode. So, uh, sure. so sorry, I totally derailed that, Yiska. So your question again. Okay, so basically that leads sort of into the point where. Okay, so you depart from the team. They obviously know for, like, you probably know sooner than the public, certainly. And then with your departure come certain roster changes, right? So Ben Best move, and uh, Hip move out of the starting lineup. And, like, 
Then also the unfortunate occurrence where Fefe gave that interview, and it, he quite clearly said that you gave them uh, like room to decide, came out r wrong. So I, I guess my question is, is that just a coincidence that things happen? Is it just like that they take the opportunity to revamp and just to set things right in terms of what was said? So um, to first give context to this, I, when, when I tried to build the roster, I knew I would be looking for rookies especially, but looking for rookies and even like in the state of Overwatch in general, I know that like I don't want to build people into being specialists, but naturally people can't really be that versatile. The only guy that like pops off really, really hard on every hero constantly is Scarpe, at least on my opinion. Like he's the only guy to do that on like a vast uh, hero pool kind of. And like with this, this idea, I wanted to build a roster that would have unique colors. So coming into stage one, uh, like uh, pretty much like everyone, there's like no, um, the fact that people would be French, I would put them on the roster, etc. Like I'm actually the last guy that would work with that because I really put emphasis on European talent uh, compared to French one. And like coming to the to the team, I really wanted to have like each meta, if that different, like for instance, a got meta, a dive meta, or a stage four kind of meta as well with Rodog and Flex Report and this, uh, this kind of stuff. I wanted to, people to be ready and people to be ready to show their own color. So some people would be really great at uh, God's meta. Some people would be better in dive meta. We can already see it with like different player. Like uh, to take an example, Jester is really confident on Winston is like one of the best Winston in the world, but that doesn't translate that much in Reinhardt, even if he's really good. We can agree on that. So yes. coming into the test, um, I really wanted to see some players, but I was surprised that like specific players in the team ended up being the right candidate to play uh, God's meta. So today, if on stage one, some players played, it's because they deserve it. And um, the way I function from the past three years on coaching and ended up being a head coach, the last thing I wanted to do is have hands on on everything. Like if I recruit three people that could be head coach and that are really reputed um, coach among the, the pro scene, it's not to just put them on the bench. You see what I do and you listen and that's it. No, everyone was like gathered to take decisions. It was like a lot of freedom as Fifi was saying and he kept repeating it and even saying that the player's decision um, uh, was like a common agreement with everyone. Like stage one, I could have seen things differently but in the end, I ended up trying to gather everyone's perspective. And instead of going for A or B or C, I just ended up trying to try Z, like a mix of everyone's perspective and trying to find the best answer by cutting like the right one. So now if you see this, the, like, the, there's no like specific choice that I would make for myself or like just the team trying to go for favoritism. It's just the way it is. And for Dave Mera, we, I'm not surprised about the lineup. This is what I was looking for, like, before the, the, the season even began. Like, I, I knew this, this type of uh, roster would be the one that we would try if uh, DPS Mera uh, wouldn't end up being here. Like, Nico is an excellent Brigitte, and Shadowburn is an excellent DPS player. Like, and not to say Nico is not a good DPS player, it's just that everyone has their specific color. Shadowburn couldn't play Brigitte, like, at the level Nico does. So, mm -hmm. it's just... Factors, factors, factors. Like, yeah. This is the way it is. And then also, like in, in the main tank case, I think Cloudy was probably brought on as a Winston specialist, right? Mm. More so than. I mean, the two of them could have like fight to each other, but Ben Bess is really confident on Reinhardt. Like, I really like Cloudy and how he works, etc. Like, I would have seen him playing like all time, but in the end, like, Ben Bess was really, really great on. On Reinhardt. And that's why I was really happy to see this kind of results, like being surprised uh, on myself perspective about those players, because again, there's like, there's, there's unique colors and unique talent. And Ben Bess is for me, one of the best Reinhardt in the Overwatch League, to say the least, like he's really doing great. And like the way he plays it, the way he knows the heroes, it know, I know that it's something natural. And everyone on the coaching staff could agree with that, that Ben Bess was doing great. So that's why we've, gone for him and cloudy is like really great in smart plays and that's why it matched so well on um winston and orissa when ben Bess is someone more um 
from instinct, like if someone really out blooded, like you will go for it. And that's why it matched so perfectly the God's Meta one, you need to be aggressive. This is Vancouver, like always striving for pushing for an advantage in this kind of stuff. This is what Ben Best creates in the team. So, yeah. so I do, I do want to ask you something because to from, and again, this is probably the first extended conversation we've had. I've, I've seen you like type things before and stuff, but this is the first like conversation. And you kind of talked about this, experience in 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 maturity as a head coach and in ex, mainly experience but it seems to me like you've definitely got a really good level of self-awareness on kind of where your strengths and weaknesses maybe are as a coach or even a head coach so in going to the Dallas Fuel um is is like the ultimate goal to kind of get that experience and maybe come back to like a head coach again someday once you do that or is that something where it's just like you know what i tried it and i just realized like maybe that's just not uh specifically for me i think it's both of it i think there's um like right now it's not something for me that's 100 percent sure um but at the same time going forward being like older maybe i would get this opportunity sometime but what i know and especially coming coming from the valiant experience and from what we wanted to do together on um, season uh, season two, like I know what I could bring in Dallas Hall, which is like a really good right hand for my head coach. Notably because of my experience as a like prior experience as a head coach now, which gives like a lot of emphasis on what I could have as a perspective, etc. That I couldn't get uh, being an assistant coach, but as well just by the experience that I have in Valiant, like being really versatile, trained to go for everything the team needed. And in the end, like everyone kind of liked it and approved it and wanted to be like higher on a higher position, higher responsibility. And that's why that coming into that as well, I'm really confident and really like productive because I know I won't look for something more. I just want my right place and I will go for it for 100%. And that's why I think it really pleased Iro and every member of the coaching staff and some for the players. Like, I, no. No, right now, I know my strength and I know my weakness and I can push for these colors that I have and try to give it to the team and being like performant. Like that, that's why I'm, I, again, I'm so grateful to go for an assistant coach position, but not having that as well because everything structure, the coaching staff is great and for players. Like now I'm back to root and I will stay there for a long time. I just want to be perfect in my own position so I can feel good. This is how I walk at least. So when the Paris uh, Eternal were announced, um, there was expectations were pretty high on the roster from a GOATS perspective, uh, right? They were all looked as, you know, EU is where GOATS came from, and any player born in Europe is uh, ingrained into their DNA that they're going to be good at GOATS, right? So um, that that was like the prevailing Reddit opinion of this, and we we saw it a lot when we when we announced kind of some of our power rankings. They're like, "Nah, you guys are idiots." And um, so I, I would I would love to ask you, besides defending us, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but <laughs> essentially, a lot of people spoke very highly as Paris Paris as a goats team and as a team that has a lot of experience with that kind of play style. Uh, what do you think caused expectations to be so different from the actual results that we saw in stage one? There's a mix of like us being rookies. Like the stuff is really like veterans. I, at least me and Cal, we know how watch league walks and, and stuff. But for the players, we have veterans, but we have mainly rookies. And there's one fact as well that I was discussing with like internally with people and just in general, is that um, could agree, and I even said it like admit myself that Europe was really great on tanks, but at the same time we could like I I could feel like that Overwatch League, in, like teams in general, just didn't get the ex this expense prior. Like if Overwatch League would play on the tank meta for as long as European did, like maybe it could have been the same result, maybe even more. And I was trying for the sure. the later answer, which would be that. Like Overwatch League teams, as soon as they get the base experience on GOATS, they would even go for something higher. And that's why at the same time when I was seeing people uh, putting Vancouver in power ranking so low, like mid-table or something like that, I was like, 
it doesn't make any sense. Even more on the God's Meta, since they played it that much in Contenders, they were so great. Mm -hmm. Dowry, and there's one important factor in God's Meta especially, is that they're already a built team. They already have all the synergy, all the communication, all the patterns, and this is so important in the God's Meta. So in the end, for Paris, there was a lot to build internally, and there was a lot to build as well on the God's Meta meta because even another european team like compared to other team like giganti samsung etc we weren't that great like they were way better they were like really consistent and really solid and then you hold the base when us we needed to build the team from ground zero and i don't think we're like a gold space team and that's why paris i'm really glad for that that paris is doing that great uh in like week one for you like playing DPS comps, etc. Yeah. Even if Shangdu is a particular matchup because notably of experience, they can't really react to this kind of playstyle. So I ended up being a fall, all fall, but it's fine. You, you can just decide if you want to answer this, but of course there were some talks from the European side that they scrimmed you a lot, especially the bigger teams. Um, so the rumors were they were winning a sizable amount of scrims pre overwatch league would yeah. you say that's true or yeah for sure like giganti again giganti samsung and i don't remember the other one there was another one i uh, angry titan yeah. they had a they had a bit the screams were real like the beginning was really good from them after the first defeat they were doing a bit bad but after that they did good no no those three teams were really, really good i mean Obviously, it's kind of funny to see again people uh, leaking this kind of stats, but I suppose this is needed for European because I know sure. we don't really get that much exposure. But whatever, the fact is that, that this is true, and I think that was a valuable experience for us to get destroyed that much because if we wouldn't get that kind of experience, we would have done like at least this great uh, in uh, stage one. Obviously, it's not that great. We got. 3-4, mm -hmm. we could have done better, it's fine, but I think this is still a decent result from the guys, and that sure. this expense coming from Europe helped us being like a good like plus team uh, in GOAT. Um, because obviously we didn't have um, that, we weren't that comfortable on GOATs in, in Prior, like even when you build the team Ground Zero, you match them up, you can see already like some kind of good plays, we could have just win the games as well against Giganti, but that wasn't the case. We needed this experience, we needed to train because we are not like big like talents and stuff and we need to walk, we needed to build this team synergy and that was fine with me because that was the same philosophy. Like we are not insane talents, we just want to work as hard as possible and get good results. And compared to what like the the community was expecting, like being a, like a bottom like a team like Mayhem or Justice, etc., we didn't end up in this case. So that's good, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joe, what about you, man? We haven't heard from you in a while. you have any questions uh, for Damon before we hop over to Fuel? One thing that I've thought, or at least looking at um, some of the Paris content, um, I think, you know, uh, First Light, you know, you're, the, the, the kind of video series that, that Paris has been putting out has, has been, you know, kind of uh, wholesome in a way. And I, I just wanted to get your kind of take on that. Was that something that you wanted to build from the ground up is kind of like a very much a... You, you hear this used a lot, but a family, right? You, everybody eats together. Everybody, you know, plays together. You go out and play football together. You know, everybody's, you know, very friendly with each other. Was that something that you put a lot of stock into and you invested a lot into when you wanted to build, like, the system, the team itself? You wanted everybody to try and get along as much as possible because that would translate into the gameplay? Was that something that you put a lot of emphasis towards? Um, and for this, I wouldn't say that. Obviously, we wanted to have, like, um, like a... Like, yeah, you like don't want a bad structure. Yeah, yeah, it's more like being uh, as disciplined as possible, but um, mm. because I like things to come naturally, like I don't want to force anything. Um, because I know we are like we could be family, but at the same time, if you look on the paper, we just co-workers. So if right. someone just wants to like apply the job and that's it, it's fine by me because he has his own life, he has his own friends, own stuff, but. Obviously, with uh, that much of rookies in the first place, they not set up in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. This is their first time. They may not have people, etc. So the best cause of action is trying to be as a family. And that's why I think it ended up being like that naturally. It makes but a lot of emphasis on that as well. That's why he tried his hardest as well to make that kind of stuff. So eating together, uh, doing stuff like a family, as you said. So 
uh, on my case it wasn't really but that much okay. emphasis on it but makes did and it kind of came off naturally as well from the team and it shows it shows through the video content that you guys have been, you know formally you guys have been putting out and uh yeah it's just been nice to see something that isn't super edited isn't super kind of scripted everybody's just kind of like sat in front of a camera it it was just you know like a little interview series and everybody just kind of chilled out i don't know it it was very natural feeling mm. and you, that could that that could it was permeable through the screen and it you could you could really tell that Mm -hmm. things were going decent behind the scenes to, to say the least uh, obviously i can't tell exactly how successful you know the, the family dynamic was but you know going from... decent is the name of my new open division team by the way <laughs> going decent. Is, is that not the most me thing i could say things are going the decent. most vanilla opinion possible immediately riding the fence God, yes. I don't have a spine. Holy. <laughs> I tell you that. Jesus. <laughs> At you least I'm self-aware enough, right? You know what, though? Yeah, kudos to you. Being <laughs> self-aware. Good job. I really like that. So, anyways. Hey, we got to use that sounder finally. <laughs> um, yeah, so besides that, we're, I don't even know where we were at that point. Yes, uh, I, guess, I guess I can segue this. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, of course. Let's see it. Let's see the segue. There we go. <laughs> of course, I'm ready. <laughs> of course, like after this, you you okay? So you make this decision. I assume, and you don't have to even acknowledge this with a with a facial muscle. You probably had a couple of offers in the in the off season from other teams when they, or even just extending maybe with Valiant stuff like that. You weren't like Paris was obviously not your only option you had, right? So. Then you make that decision. Was it immediately apparent to you that you would have a job in Overwatch League after that? How do you mean exactly? The end of uh, your sentence. So when you gave up the head coach job, did you uh, know you were going to be employed in the Overwatch uh, League? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, that's, um, I'm a bit weird on this case, but um, obviously like coming as a head coach, I knew that if it would end up not being good for me, um, it's like going really high, but you can as well just jump from the rooftop sure. and die. And that's, the, that's the, the issue with that. And when I felt that I was not feeling good at all and I really wanted to leave, um, that was something from ground feeling. I obviously thought about it a lot, but I knew that I just didn't want to force some things out, even for myself, but just for the team as well. I don't want to be there as a head coach and not functioning as a head coach because I can't. And that's why I really wanted this to be fast and be on the end of stage one. And as well, asking it before the stage one ends up would be to try to find other opportunities. But when I said I want to leave and I wanted to take this decision, I wasn't already like uh, trying to prepare something. It was really from my feeling. And I was like, I want to leave. And I could have ended up with no job or nothing. It, it didn't really matter to me. For an example, back in Gizmo's Origin, so my first team, I ended up doing like great reads with Xera, but that was my first experience and I did a lot of mistakes. And I could see that me and the team couldn't work together anymore. And that's why even on the really bad Mercato um, moment, like no good team would... Uh, would try to recruit and I wouldn't find something normally better than Gamers Origin. I still took the decision. And even if I would end up with nothing, I prefer to leave instead of just forcing some things out. And luckily I got uh, Movie Star Riders right after. Luckily now I got Dallas Fall. But when I take this kind of decision, it's not something that I want to prepare. I don't manipulate people or manipulate my own mm -hmm. path, my own like ego, or um, I don't know how to say it, but it, it's just not me like when i took the decision it's not just me it's the team as well like there's 15 people trying to strive for like this team like paris etc i just can't take that on my own and that's why i thought about the team first and myself as well but just like the fact that i didn't feel good and just wanted to leave so the rest come after basically yeah they like if you look at your career i think it's very fair to say just like from analyzing the moves you've made it's like when you're out you're out but when you're in you're in right mm -hmm. like i i it's almost like obligatory to always bring up this uh story whenever we do a podcast together 
with the movie Staritis, where the position was, you didn't have, like, they didn't have a, a, the, the money to have you full time. So I remember this anecdote where you had to prepare for, what would it be? Pit, yeah. yeah. And it was, it was a close call because it was about qualifying. And you paid yourself out, like your way out there, drove over there to Spain, right? It, with your, by your own money. I and mean, just showed up at the door and we're like, okay, guys, let's win this qualifier. And you did in the end. That was... I mean, this is something that we prepared with Sense, so the, the, the coach back at the time. And I was like, wouldn't it be good to like just come to Madrid and see the guys directly? And I was like, yeah, that could be good. So mm -hmm. I basically took the train and see them for the day of the, quali the qualifier. And uh, yeah, it was a great experience, like seeing the guys directly and just like since I didn't have any like big experience in like um, really huge uh, structures, so having apartments and uh, office, etc. It was it, it was great to see as well for myself. But yeah, at first I just took the train and see the guys directly. I think they reimbursed me though, but. At first, I think I paid it. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, it was just, I think the physical um, uh, apply to like make the game motivated and show them that the stuff is like here, trying to really help them and go through this qualifier was an important step as well. At least apparently the players appreciated. So it was effective. Okay, so you say, we just <clears throat> established, you, when you're in, you're in. Why are you in with fuel? Um, I'm in with fuel because they were <laughs> kind enough to accept uh, a really bad head coach first. And, um, uh, and well, um, for myself, I, I just like this team like that much. If I wanted to end up like ending with the head coach position, I wanted to go for something really long term. Like I wanted to focus on the team that I would stay in and like help as much as possible. And obviously for the season, that is kind of mid season, it's kind of not possible. Like we're just focusing on the season first, but I would make sure to try to go for, even for a team that I would see long term. And it wasn't a Valiant or it was as a dash for a Valiant because I know them and feel all because I really want I really wanted to be part of this team. Everything seems structured, the players are talented, the staff as well, and the organization is just really, really, really great. And like when I had the opportunity to join them, I was like, we go for it. Like we go for that because I, I knew from uh, not take perspective that this team was good, not only on like just being objective, it was as well the perfect team for me. And that's why I really wanted to go and we made it. Uh, we made this happen. Would it be possible to get an elaboration on why Dallas feels like the perfect fit for you? Is there, um, is there anything that you can talk about there? I think it's mostly... Um, the way the organization is uh, first, like the way they pull that much resources for mm -hmm. uh, the team and how they take care of them. Uh, our, our, every time I'm hearing about that, well, it's like only good stuff about it. And there's one particular factor that was really important for me, which was the staff. Not only mm -hmm. the coaching staff, but the staff as well, like Matthew, Clint, like those two guys are really great, but the coaching staff, like each one of, the, uh, of them, like, for me, they're just really high border. Like, they're really fucking great guys. And, like, not only they're talented, but they're, like, just, I don't know, as an individ as individuals from the videos, from what I heard, like, that seems great people. And, again, I'm not someone that really um, strive for a contract, a salary, or a position. I'm someone that wants to go somewhere, feel good. And if I feel good, I know I can be really productive and try to go and aim on being the best at my position. And coming to this team, I had prior like, um, feeling about it. And when I came now, now it's been two weeks, not only it's matching my expectation, it's even better. And mm. that's why right now I never felt that productive and ambitious um, since actually the moment where movie star writers wanted me to help them for the pit. And that mm. I didn't have any like stuff, and I, I helped them basically, and that was just I don't know. I, I'm feeling really great, and again, so grateful because Good. that's what I wanted. So let me let me give some <clears throat> some uh, 
second party impression of the fuel because okay people will say well you know like this is a guy who just joined this employee of course he's going to talk well about them i genuinely believe like the stuff you said about them really investing in the staff um just like caring about the people i would even say many of the problems that they had in the past was because they cared almost too much in the people uh, that they were about and were pro probably not ruthless enough in to compete with others while others were cutting and just saying okay we're hustling here okay okay you were our oh, star player last season okay 250k we're selling your soul as well like that never worked with astro seemingly and they also okay this is again put your mask on but they're uh, certainly paying well um oh everything comes together it, it just really feels to me like dallas is one of the uh those organizations that are doing it really well really investing in it not just financially but also like what they do for their people and like if you're if you're staff or a player like you can talk about if you're really driven okay maybe you w would want to go to nyxl or vancouver at this point but in, in terms of everyone else like environment type of stuff now dallas is is up there with the best of them yeah, for me, you want to be in Dallas for well, as a staff as a player. Like I can say it straight up. Um, obviously, there's a lot of team that could be interesting, notably for my competitive drive. But that's for on like every possible stuff, like media, competitive, long-term perspective, anything. Even coming to the Dallas for Ultimate Weekend is gonna be like crazy, and they're making it as crazy as possible. Like this is the way they invested in esports, like Astro and Envious in general. Like they're just like they really go for it and this passion for esports like they translated with like all the resources they can pull uh to make it happen so i can only respect that uh, as 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 an esports fan i can just respect that so yes guy i do um, have a question specifically for you actually sure so um and and joe you could probably chime in honestly damon you can too i'd expect that you can't but <laughs> so last season you know, the Dallas Fuel definitely had a tricky last season when it came from mm -hmm. infrastructure, especially from uh, a coaching perspective and being mm -hmm. one of those teams that was kind of uh, outcasted for some of the for for some of how they uh, treated players or coaches or uh, whatever. Sure. I, I know that's being very vague and like a very TLDR. How much do you think that that was overblown? from last season and how much of it do you think is like had directly impacted to the, you know, the Dallas fuel that we see now that we're now kind of saying is like, you know, as one of the kind of premier examples of what an mm, organization yeah. should be in not just like competitive overwatch, but just in like esports in general. I think it definitely lines up with a lot. What, uh, are you, what are you giggling? Yiska. No, no, no. <laughs> I think it lines up very well with what Damon and Yiska have just said. Like, Hastro is very invested and is very involved. I think season one was a hard time in general for everybody because nobody knew what this was going to be like. Nobody knew how to make a structure. No, there was no precedent being set. And we kind of like Overwatch League hit the ground running and you just had to know what to do. And I don't think that many teams even knew what to do. Those who did succeeded. And, you know, Dallas was kind of behind the eight ball. You know, I'm not too, you know, uh, ashamed or, you know, nervous to say that they, they, they were 100%. You saw Hastro kind of step in and be very hands on and, and really get his hands dirty and figure out what was the wrong thing to do, what was the right thing to do. And it seems like now we see season two Dallas fuel things look on the up and up everything looks you know ab above par and things look better and i think that's because mistakes were made in season do one. things look decent so, you could do say decent yes decent? that, that right. is an adjective you okay. could say right. i won't personally say that john i know that's but, a little bold you know, for you yeah I get not it. in my vernacular possibly you know and if i, if I can put my my grain of salt to that like um from even an outside perspective, it was like a lot of things weird going on, mm. but sometimes things can't work. Like uh, p people, especially in esports, want to put like emphasis on okay, there's a reason for this, and we should go for this yeah. guy or this uh, organization, etc. Like, but but sometimes things can't work. Like 
envious. Yes. Coming in being that well, like everyone was expecting them to be like doing great, but Overwatch League as a whole, and it's not only that well, everyone, every team, every players that you follow had a lot of issues in season one and gonna have issues in season two. Valiant had a lot of trouble, but we made it. That's well had a lot of trouble. They couldn't make it. That's how it happened. And I know I'm going to have like a lot of people um, going and try to kill me. But let me tell you that like, I don't feel Kai was the problem. And Kai was, he, I was and he's a great mind, a great coach. And he will always try to do his best for this team. And like being in Paris and seeing how passionate he is, he could have the wrong perspective sometimes. So I can agree with him or I can agree with him as well. It doesn't really matter. Like the way he's passionate about things, I know he tried it in Dallas Wall and he tried his best. And sometimes this can't work. I'm pretty sure Astro tries his best to figure out problems and how Dallas Wall was uh, going wrong. And he couldn't make it, but he tried his best as well. I think everyone in the end wants one thing is that they want to win. Fans obviously were really frustrated to see a team not ended up being like good when they expected to do so. But let me remind you something is that they're gonna like the guys the players the staff astro they're gonna be the first guy to be really fucking sad about it and that's why i think everyone did yeah. like that best and things just couldn't work it's how it is like yeah. and that's why it's good in the very end that everything cut through kyle got all the opportunities and i hope he will like obviously being in paris is good but I hope he's going to continue being like that good and having those kind of opportunities and just the players as well. Like it's done. It's a story that happened to end up bad, but in the end, everyone needs to find their opportunity and that's it. Like we need to strive for competitive. We just need to strive for a like, good scenario and that's it. Like sometimes you just can't find the reason. There's too many factors. There's too many factors. And There's sometimes not always some sort of tinfoil hat that the community, yeah. goes, oh, it's because mm. this guy said this bad thing on Twitter and he made this Instagram post that yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes they just aren't, things aren't working. People don't get along. And again, Damon, put on your, put on your mask because every coming, team yeah. has <laughs> these issues. I, I know I'm I'm holding on to Yiski. He's got the he's the Rottweiler. I'm holding on to him as yeah, much as I can. Yeah, yeah. But he's gonna go. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I, I will go because okay. So again, mask on, Damon. <laughs> um, so okay, let let me first say the, the the instance where I thought that Dallas care too much hurt them. The one thing was certainly effect. Where, where you can now say, like, how much value did he have, like, to team cohesion? He always was a player that was very, you know, a very particular style. And then he wanted it so much that it, it becomes hard. Like, there were decisions in the workings in Fuel. Like, from what I've heard, they, they were talking about moving effect to uh, flex tank for a while during that season. Like... The crazy stuff, right? So, okay. For so this season uh, or season one? Season one. Season one. Uh, okay, so... Um, also, the XQC position where they delayed the Soul Watch signing or cancelled it because it was like, okay, may maybe we give him another shot. And then, of course, like the ban happens and then, then it's over, right? So, that these situations were just like, okay, Dallas took a chance had loyalty, also kept all the other players that built their brand in Overwatch for them around for a long time, gave them coaching positions and whatnot. Not. Like, they care. That's definitely the case. Now, when it comes to Kai Kai, I wonder if he lacked the insight into his ability that you, Damon now displayed by stepping down from the head coaching position. From no. the information I gathered, he was completely over in over his head as a head coach. Had, had certain hierarchical structures couldn't work with the people that were the, in there. That doesn't mean he's sour grapes as a coach. That's like, A, that doesn't disqualify him as working as a coach outside the head coach position. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily disqualify him from working as a head coach for another team where you don't have champ literal champions of years past that have certain... Uh, 
you know, like egos and expectations. That was a big downfall for Dallas, right? They had expectations of being one of the top teams. They completely nosedived. That takes a special t t uh, type of head coach. And then also in esports, you don't know, like you need to make sure that you're getting out of your deal in a way that ideally makes everyone look fine, but you also need to look out for yourself. So depending on that situation, I can see how you want to hold on to do your specific position. I, I personally, from, from talking to multiple people in that situation, I, I personally don't think that, uh, or the, the parachute was pulled at the right time for that. It should have mm. happened way earlier and as administrative decisions and also hierarchical decisions and mm. just to, in terms of leadership didn't pan out with that team it's again it's so it's so deep and like yeah. you, you were speaking about, yeah. know, about like joe about the the really people speaking about like well yeah it did bad yeah. blah, blah. like that was something that i would do like back in like before joining rog i was like ah rog mm, man like the way they were acting etc Coming into this team, I was like, okay, now I need to really shut up and just like see people, talk to them, know them. And after that, I can make a supposition or like mm -hmm. just a, a profile because rock people was obviously particular, but they were really passionate and they were really striving for competition and they mm -hmm. were like really professional when it's needed. And I think for Cal and Envious especially, that's maybe the same games. Again, supposition, but like... I don't think that um, me and Rogue coming into Overwatch League would have worked that perfectly. Mostly because there's so much like history and stuff that sure. are coming through that in the end you need like a, a vast um, equipment of multiple cultures, multiple colors, etc. That's why like for instance, Valent was doing great in season one because you had like good people in every culture and in every position and like we were just striving for being professional. Even if we were a family at some point, but at least we were like really professional. Maybe with Envious coming to that wall, they were like, are we really good? We know each other, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, like the leadership that Cal needed for um, the, the, the envious people wasn't working that much because they knew them like really high. And as well, um, just speaking about the flex tank stuff uh, from Effect and even playing time on uh, tank, etc. I think this is a ballsy move to to do, but I think this is a really responsible uh, run, responsible one. Because if you have that much issue in the team and some players just can't play, even more in a team that is losing, so you may have like a lot of mental issues with players. In the end, taking this kind of decision is what Kyle should have done, in my opinion. Like this is ballsy, of course. It, it may sound weird for for the people, but I can say that in being a team, when things go wrong, you need to find solution, and sometimes this kind of solution are needed for the team. And for everything that you're saying about like looking like a brute person or doing like taking too much of the responsibility etc i think again that cal people are really going against him but cal is someone really human like he has yeah. a big heart and he's really passionate and that's why he may have done things wrong and it's mostly because he's passionate he's like he has a lot of transparency and the last thing he wants to do is just like abuse of his uh, title position or uh, mm -hmm. just trying to look like the good guy because we have a lot of people looking like trying to look like the good guy not being transparent like, Cal mm -hmm. is not this guy Cal is always yes. trying for like being as truth like the true almost thing almost too much so you know yeah like, exactly it's, and that's it's my to issue a detriment well. sometimes yeah I agree and that's my issue and that's what I learned from like the peace fire uh, the past three exactly. years yeah but yeah I don't know for me it's just a sad story that ended up maybe it could have been pulled out before, but I think it's fair, notably from Astro, the organization, etc., to try to give everyone a fair chance to be successful. Yes. Because mm -hmm. just take Valiant, like Valiant in stage two, it was really, really hard for everyone because it wasn't an easy transition. Moon was still in Korea. I was taking charge of it and I was going okay, but like that, that was a stressful moment because we knew we needed to fix some stuff and. Like it was really painful for everyone, and we ended up it ended up being making us stronger. Actually, mm -hmm. this kind of stage make it made us stronger. So maybe it could have been the same thing for that all, but in the end, we were lucky. That were not. That's it. Like, yeah. Happens. Can we talk about other ballsy tank moves for a second? And uh, I believe so. Kind of all at the same time here, Dallas Fuel signed Note. Um, did you have kind of any hand to play in, in the Note signing or anything that you can tell us 
about why that feels like a good fit? Um, coming to the team, uh, I was really pleased because Aaron was asking me like what I would think about specific moves into the roster, mm-hmm. um, notably for like the nothing because as he said in the on the watch, that was something that was bringed up by uh, Boston Dallas etc. Um, I was saying that I really like not from my uh, outside perspective from beginning of season one. I was always seeing this guy as being really, really consistent, really smart in his plays. He was making Boston really like looking really good in some specific match, um, notably back in dive meta, but even in stage four. Uh, I think that it was just like that great as well. So when they pulled the opportunity out, trying to get my um, opinion on this, I just said like what I just said right now, which is that he's a great player and could be a good trade for Dallas Fall. I don't know if it impacted that much in the decision, mm-hmm. but at least they tried to hear me out, even if I just got into the team. So again, really appreciate what Aaron is doing and same for the staff. Like That's a good thing. Yeah, but what is Boston doing? No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to. <laughs> that's that's the real question. <laughs> Counting them stacks, dude. Yeah, he's yeah, they're just true. Hawks farm in the the bank. He's, he 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 moves his goalposts. It's about uh, it doesn't making matter money, flipping if players. You win you know? if you're in a penthouse apartment. Yeah, exactly. In LA. Scrooge yeah. McDuckin. I get it. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Mask equipped. <laughs> that was. We'll break that. We can break that mask sometimes. Oh, you got to be no careful. Way. Um, stop, please. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't don't really. <laughs> All right. No, fair, it's uh, Okay, fair enough. That's that. That was the subtle signal that we asked from you. Is if yes. there's a question that you don't want us to go the to, the most subtle. Do this. Yeah. Big X just, in the yeah, sky. No. That <laughs> helps if you scream. And Damon's salary, by the way, is. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gets it yeah he's got it um dallas boys shall we go on to dallas sure all right sure. let's go on to dallas here for a second uh so do you feel like and this is kind of just very recently do you feel like it has helped dallas fuel and probably you to a little bit that you guys didn't have games in week one or do you think that that might have been a disadvantage for you I think since we had that much changes, me included, um, like I think it's great. Like it could have, it, it made us being able to like just do our own thing, taking our own pace, and as well watching the other teams, so we could figure out the meta um, a little bit more. Um, obviously, it's just like a good chance. Like it, it it's a, yeah. I, I think it's great actually. The fact that it's week one on the change of meta, I think the timing is really good for us. So. So yeah. what about, so looking at stage two here, though, you guys have, I don't want to say four easy matches, but Yiska does. That's exactly the terminology Yiska yeah. wanted to use. He said you have four cakewalk matches, much like that Boston writer they're who decent, said that the you know, Boston they, they can't, they're not, Uprising they're not, so they're are going to, you know, sweep, sweep the spark, right? Uh, you know, Yiska is the same way. He loves using just very broad Yes, very much generalized so. yes. terminology. Not very close. Never, 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 never taking a stance on things too much. You yeah, know? Very, okay, very careful, very, very methodical. Yeah, 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 he is literally never shoots from the hip. No, never. Literally, See, the you're saying of this competitive here. Overwatch. You're saying this here, but I read me writing four seemingly weak opponents. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on seemingly. So. I don't know if it's just because, like, I've I've gotten a little bit bi- uh, of a bigger yes guy recently that you think I would talk about cake, but like, I I think our friends are pretty. <laughs> so to oh, be yeah. fair, let's let's walk at th- look at them. I think I'm not even that mad. I think there was Houston in there, certainly cake. Yeah, um, they play Houston at home. I think that's going to be a fun one. Certainly cake. That was also a name for the podcast that we just. <laughs> Couldn't quite land be on your that. Ba- is, is that cake? Certainly is that cake. your like banned from high school? Is that is that your meme now? Certainly, like, it's, it's actually my. His... Have you so there's there is actually a band called Cake, and you can call yourself Certainly Cake, and just be one of the 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 band. What are they called? Fish. No, uh, like when you <laughs> when you aren't the band, but you play all their songs. A cover band. A cover band. Yeah. Yeah. There, there would be a cake so cover a band cake cover called band Certainly, called Certainly cake. cake. Yeah. All right. All right. 
tell you how much Twitch <laughs> chat cares about and this line of conversation. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> you guys heard about that? The new cake cover bands. All right. Anyways, <laughs> back to the uh, schedule. All right, yes, go. What do we got in the yeah, terms of schedule? All right, yes, go. Tell us about these cake walks. <laughs> Certainly, cakes wins here. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So, Where are you typing? You're play... on Wikipedia. No, no, no. I, I just said something in the chat that. Okay. So they're playing Toronto today. That's not a cakewalk necessarily. Eh, then they play Paris. Enough, great. Okay. Well, there you go. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's in a cake territory. Then Vancouver, uh, no, not cake, not cake. Okay. That's more You're like, doing so good. If it's cake, if if it's cake, then there's razor blades in it. Um, <laughs> then so it's the it's the Hall Halloween after school special PSA uh -huh. of cake. Yeah, yeah. So, but the back loaded part is you're playing Valiant, you're playing Houston, and then week five is Florida. Yeah. So. Judging from the fact that you need probably four wins in order to make stage playoffs, you probably just need one of these, you know, decent to bigger I mean, Like, honestly, a win today would already put you in a good position. If you're like going 3 1, let's say you have a good map score, and then you can probably grind it out, even though live matches at the own audience is probably something else. Not sure if that helps or not, doesn't. But it seems to be a pretty doable stage to make stage playoffs, right? Certainly cake, I would say. It should be. And even always this uh, week one um, bye. Um, I don't know. Everything can go right as it can go wrong. Uh, I just know that we should have what uh, we need in our hands to win as many matches as possible. Obviously, Vancouver could be a hard one. Um, but the others can be as well, notably Toronto and Paris for this week. Um, so we just need to go for it, and if we don't go for it, it's on us. Like we, we, we just we, we really need to to win. Like that's all I see. It. Like uh, obviously this the, we we could make stage playoff. They didn't make it for uh, stage one when they should have done it, and they lost against Boston. So that's really heavy on them. Uh, I could see it. So I suppose right now that we like go really hard for those match and try to go for this stage to play off because they must not miss that chance. And yeah. So I, I have one more question actually, because I know you do need to get going here pretty quick and it's about the, we're seeing some uh, home games going on in overwatch league this in season two and Dallas fuel are going to be part of those. And I would just love to hear your thoughts. Obviously we haven't seen it before, so there's not really empirical evidence towards this, but just your thoughts on how big of a deal is home advantage in a for uh, like the Dallas, uh, the having your, your Dallas, whatever, what are they calling it? The takeover the or homestead homestead. It, yeah. So I'm yeah, thinking, thinking like of that. tavern takeover, which is that Hearthstone? <laughs> it's Hearth that's Hearthstone. That's Hearthstone. <laughs> that's my well-met <laughs> podcast roots. By the way, go sub to well-met podcast. There are a bunch of great dudes that I used to, do a podcast with they're still doing it i'm gonna be on their show recently uh anyways uh so <laughs> yeah so anyways is that a big deal number two has actual home well let's just start there let's just start there i want i want to hear more about your thoughts on homestand i think it's a big advantage and notably from um my experience in paris uh walk up uh i think the casters from overwatch League already spoke about it but the fan scene is really really crazy in france and came coming up in the in the paris walk up it was just like insane that was like so much people and the crowd even if that like not that much but that was like still a good amount of people um even with 20 people you can do a lot as soon as they're like french overwatch fans or french esport fans because they do it as well in other games uh we already seen it not a league of fusion and stuff they're just like crazy. So in Dallas, with the amount of seat and just like everything going on, being the first home game, uh, the match Dallas against Outlaws, same goes with Valiant, like which would be a pretty good match as well um, from like the storyline. I think that will be great, and I think that will be a big advantage when the guy is gonna see like that amount of people cheering for you and like being there like as a really first home game. I think. I think it's gonna 
Maybe it's gonna crush all the team because I felt like for United Kingdom, when they needed to do the World Cup and Paris World Cup, it was like kind of heavy on them. But um, maybe it's gonna be different in Dallas. But I expect like us to understand that it's a really big advantage um, coming into even on a competitive matter. And this and is gonna, gonna be this is gonna be crazy. This is gonna be thousands of people there, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I've only seen the floor plan. Um, but, but my understanding is like, it's basically a half bowl at that point, like 2000 plus four and those tickets 5, are sold plus. out pretty quick, no? sold out. And they weren't cheap, man. They were yeah. not like, I, I saw mm. some of those. I'm like, Dope. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm glad that they sold out. If it was yeah, in definitely. San Francisco, I probably would have done the same it's thing. A and good, actually it's bought a good them, shout but... for like next season. You know, if they get this right and people are already selling out tickets to stadiums and, and, season two like it's a good step forward i wouldn't say we're we're home clear by any means i know but it's a good okay great i it know is, of two we're, we're overwatch league franchises that think that they can sell out two thousand seats at double digit dollars a pop so okay, okay. i i i'm hoping if that's Not the triple case digit, and it's, you know fabulous. like we're, we're talking more in like the 20 dollar range than we are okay. Okay. like the 70 no, 80 dollar range i was i would assume it'd be like 60 to 80 somewhere in there mm, yeah. for that's for a silly. for a, a game or for a yeah, yeah yeah three three match thing hmm. yeah it just depends Honestly. on what the format is right but so yeah so i know i know at least two three three uh overwatch league teams that well i'm best of luck to them have I that have that expectation and i'm like you yeah. know what man more power to you uh the, by the like, way just just yeah. a quick anecdote right that's a cool one also that displays once again what kind of an organization dallas is because i know you know they have these vip tickets and they're mm -hmm pretty stupidly expensive they said so i think they're upwards of 200 dollars and they had like they they contacted uh internet hulk's father and just said okay how do you, many do you want if you want to come Aww. but he didn't he didn't you know like the flight and whatever yeah right? i mean it's, and it's also hard just to... like going to everywhere like where you're invited as as the father is like would be a full-time job but yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty um Pretty cool of Dallas as well. Definitely, yes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for any Overwatch League teams looking to fill their VIP slots, uh, <laughs> the co-host of Tactical Crouch. <laughs> yes. Yiska, go for it. We'll accept it. Yiska, Yiska <laughs> will fly all the way for Germ from Germany. Have you ever been in the States, Yiska? Uh, I was once, yeah. Uh, but only okay. really just for a weekend. Just like it was in Anaheim. Oh, and, so it was for like a. And then I flew out. Was it BlizzCon? So absolutely nothing. Was working sixteen hours. <laughs> was it like a? Editor ate, was it BlizzCon? No, no, it was an MLG. No, it was for an MLG. My editor ate half the uh, the articles I wrote just by accident. It was a shit show, <laughs> and and I was paying out of pocket most of it, and Jeez. also came out mi minus from working there. Well, days. we come out minus from living here. So, uh, just kidding. <laughs> uh, all right. Any any last questions, Joe Yiska, uh, before we get out of here? Do we want to do predictions, Damon? You know, obviously Ooh. mask on. Do we want to do some predictions for today? Real quick, real quick. For today's games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, all right. Like, like yeah. on my match or the others? Um, I I think we can do just today in general, which today? obviously would include your match. Okay. Fusion Titan Fuel Gladiators. Boom. Uh, Fusion Titans, I would say. Uh... So, no, no. Uh, Philly, Philly, London. What's what's that's the first one. Ah, uh, Philly, London. Let's okay. Um, I would say free one for uh, for Philly. Okay. Vancouver, Houston. One for one. What else? Vancouver, Houston. Vancouver, Houston. Or for zero for Vancouver. <laughs> two for two. All right. Fuel Dallas Defiant. Toronto. Dallas Fuel, Toronto Defiant. Uh, Is that where we step in? Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> just, just say it. Just say your team. You want your, think your team's going to win. Right, yeah. yeah. I, would, I, would say say I would say 3 1 for us. All right. 3 for 3. And then Gladiators, Guangzhou Charge. Uh, 3 1 for uh, Gladiators. Actually, maybe 4 0, but I would say 3 1 to be safe. Yeah, mm. we're pretty close. 
Yeah, I would I would agree on everything you said so far. Which is what I said. I say, so basically, I say Philly, I say basically Vancouver, I'm an Overwatch Dallas. League coach at this point, <laughs> is what we're saying. <laughs> Hi, hire John. Oh, I say he's coming way. soon. I'm not that confident in my prediction, but if Joe is fine with that, uh, I suppose I'm okay. <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah, that's true. I, I, think, I think Dallas, I, I don't know about Toronto just yet. Well, uh, Joe, yeah, Joe has this uncanny ability to like, he picks the right upsets. He's just very good at it. He's very good at it. Yiska and I are not as good at it. Uh, uh, to be fair, Yiska Yiska gets me sometimes. I think last uh, stage playoffs he got boom, me on the yeah. Atlanta. Yeah, there was a there was a bit of a boomage. <laughs> How's that? Oh, I remember How's... though. Yeah, I remember though when I did the um, the cast. I think it was with you, Moramen, but maybe I'm wrong. I did um, KD. I think it was a KDP lunatic eye prediction for the finals. It was like a free two or something. Yeah. It was pretty. Mm. Was pretty good. Then this match was really crazy. It was one yeah, of almost the, winning one of the only best on almost. control. Yeah, you know, they that just was, kept tying. That was so 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 good. <laughs> but I don't leave to my to my like expectation for prediction. I give it to Joe and Niska. I suppose they're like <laughs> good. What about me? What's that <laughs> supposed to mean? Wow. I don't know you enough, Kate, but we're gonna get there. Don't I worry. score higher than one of these guys. For to the be season fair, rankings to, somebody overall. did correlate. Yes, somebody yeah. did cor correlation uh, uh, percentages on you know how the power rankings have gone, and you know picked <laughs> is uh, the highest rated host on this show. So you know, got to give some sort of credit. I'm just saying, you don't have to be a genius to do this. You just, what colors do you like better for the team? And you pick that <laughs> one. That's that's literally my correlation is the colors that I liked better, and I scored higher than either of these four yeah, heads so. fair enough yeah so I'll take it. if anyone had any doubt um about uh me not being an overwatch Le league analyst they are now confident in that doubt so thank you for that i feel great um <laughs> feels... i think we can go for till 15 minutes if you want in case we, we can do 15 more minutes yeah you want to? all right i want to go 15 minutes so let's um so here's here's what we're gonna do so chat Number one, I'm going to let you ask questions. Within However, reason. I am Within going. Reason. I am going to say this: if it's bad, I'm not asking it. If it's borderline, and I ask it, Damon, all you have to do is do this, and you don't have to answer it. Is that is that fair? I think That's, it. Go for it. Go for it. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> So the question was, I, why do you think the Valiant are so bad right now? I don't think that we can answer it that way, but I would say, uh, what do you think the big difference is between the Valiant last season and this season? Like, what do you think the big performance differences are? Mm, uh, against, could you explain that to me soon, please? And we we were speaking about, I mean, I was speaking about like the death fall factors, etc. back in season one. I think this is what Valiant has gone through uh, for a lot of multiple factors. Sadly, I, I can't know for sure everything that has gone inside but um like uh, i i can't tell i can't tell i would be inside like maybe i could like see and what would be going on and understand but i think that there was a lot of factors that made it happen and now they seems to be back on track so i'm really happy with that so it's 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 crazy to think that valiant seems to be the first entity in modern history where something Gets rid of its French parts and still keeps surrendering so hard as they do now. <laughs> the best. That's fine. Jeez. Um, so, oh yeah, that's one question I wanted to ask you as well. Yeah. What's your? You worked with Gumba, right? What's your take on him? I think he's um, one of the greatest men on the game that I could work with. Um, I had issue with him on like personal and professional level. But what I liked with Goomba at the very least is that notably towards the end of the season, it was like really striving to help the team, work with him, like w work with them. And I, I'm kind of sad we didn't try that much to work together like on the strategic level, because at some point I gave it up to fill the gap in what we needed in roles in Valiant. So I was doing like a lot of stuff um, basically. But yeah, I think I think Goomba is an interesting mind. Like um, Goomba and Seita, the two of them, 
I respect them really highly. I think Boston as well, uh, being such a strong team, like such discipline, etc. I think it's coming mostly from Goomba uh, being there and like maybe doing his best for the team. So. Like I know, I know, we know together that we had a lot of issue. But there's one thing that I can say is that I will always respect him for like what he's doing um, on like professional Overwatch yeah. and even on the personal level. He made it that way with all the issue we could have in Valiant, and he just tried to work really hard. So yeah, I really respect the guy. I really respect the guy. Okay. So important question, and I'm Are not going to tell it? you from who, who is it's coming from. But who's the most Handsome head coach you've ever worked with. No pressure. Fisher. <laughs> <And Kyle. laughs> that was so fast. Wait. <laughs> Snap okay. made that uh, call. See, in, in yeah. my mind, it was Moon. Man. Yeah, I was Moon, gonna, that's Moon, like, Moon, that's got to be I mean, like an arrow to the heart right there. I mean, Moon, Moon, Moon is. Like, he is. I, I really liked his charisma. I really wanted to, like, uh, I got a lot of inspiration from him. And, like, being, like, uh, having such charisma... And in a fashion really well, which I uh, I'm really uh, I really like as well. Like he, he got this sense, like he got he got this fashion, and I, I just liked it. But obviously, Fifi for the joke, even if he's like still an handsome guy, uh, not head coach anymore. But Kai is really handsome as well. So I would so say the three of them. I do wait, hate to wait. be the first one to inform you of this, but wait, I've wait, just wait, been informed. Me... I've got a a breaking news from the Dallas Fuel. Uh, Arrow has submitted a, a PR statement saying that Damon will no longer be a coach on the Dallas Fuel. Um, so sorry about that. I hope you had we like a. I hope you had like total. a backup backup. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. I was I was going to ask him about the head coach at Gamers Origin, at Movie Stars, at Rogue, if they were all more handsome. Them in some sort of a power ranking for yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is actually pretty interesting. So um, early on in the season, when we we actually did power rankings, and one of them was about Shanghai, and we kind of said that we don't really know how good Shanghai is going to be without Roar and DK. Uh Damon, in your opinion, if if Shanghai had Roar and DK, how good of a team do you think they would be? Do you think that they would be significantly better? Maybe. I don't, I'm not sure, to be honest, because chemistry, synergy, and like individual impact that you can have, like uh, it, it depends a lot. But I, I don't know. That's that's hard to say. That's a hard question. Actually, mm, that's fair. Uh, yeah. any, anything else, uh, Yiska and Joe? Do you guys have any questions not coming from chat? Try um, to some quick ones. Yeah, we well, are doing great. So yeah. slow brain. <laughs> I mean, I I don't I, I don't want to like drop the bombs at the end of the episode and go like, what what Valiant needs to do in order to rebuild yeah. and you know some yeah. some insights there. Because there's, I mean, but what it's do they need of... to do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're oh totally right. Oh my god. Right. The... The question of the handsome head coach was coming from Aaron. Yeah, it came from Arrow in Twitch chat. So for those who are are still listening, (laughs) for those who are still listening and not canceling their tickets to Dallas homestand or for their Dallas fuel hoodie, uh, the question came from Arrow in Twitch chat. So that's why that question was there. That's why it's even more funny that he didn't actually know that it came from. We thought that you were just memeing him. Uh, wow. Oh, man. But <laughs> what, I can say, what I can say, though, is that Aaron is the best head coach I work with. Ah. See? You don't have to, you don't have to be the most handsome. You're just yeah. the best. That's the most valuable. Arrow's not the most Michael. handsome, but he'll always be in my friend zone. It's basically what I just heard. He's just you just friend zone arrow for, forever. What the fuck no. Uh, so, you don't know so, what's going on inside. That's true. That's true. Oh. All right. Well, <laughs> now, what a way to end the show. I won't say more. Yeah, it's like who's the most handsome <laughs> podcast host? Uh, let's do that one next, Joe. No, stop! Don't bully me. I don't want to. <laughs> He's choose. like, no, stop. can't do it. Can't no. do it. He wants to keep a job. I, no I get bully. it. I understand. No this, this, yeah, that's too uh, too much. Too much, right? Too much. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, anything else? Last last chance, chat. Yiska, Joe. 
got anything, okay. or is it straight up crickets here? He, yes, yes, he's got one. Yes. I'm hanging yeah, out by he myself. Has one question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell is a ten coach? I was just gonna ask that too. I'm so glad. Ah, so um, it was it was particular because I came as a ten coach, uh, but two days after, Aaron was like. Demon, you go strategy. Let's go. And yeah, we basically <laughs> made it like that. Like I'm, I'm working with um, Aaron on uh, strategy matters and all the stuff. Um, so I was pleased because again, like my aim is to be like the best right hand forward coach. Mm -hmm. Like I was trying to do with Moon. So again, Aaron, sorry for earlier. I love you and thank you for trusting me. And um, for the tank coach position, we just ended up. Like I just ended up making the war rotation. Like mm -hmm. uh, Chain is kind of taking care of it. Uh, Ticket is still on DPS. Virgin is taking care of the support. I suppose like it, it kind of changed. It may move because again you need to move depending on what happened on stage and sure, what sure. we do as a team. My integration uh, made things a little bit change, but yeah. In any case, uh, this is something that all the staff and Aaron especially is that I just like tell me what you want me to do. I will do it. And if you don't ask me to do something, I will take initiative for it. So I want you to answer this next question. No, <laughs> <laughs> and but yeah, there it is. There's there's the X. He's like, no. It's true. We gave him out. Shouldn't we give him an out? Joe's like, let's give him an out. And I'm like, no. Hey, man. No, it's just blind be side. Nice. Don't we'll go, go for the borderline question. <laughs> I can go. No, I don't actually. I'm an expert at those. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an expert at borderline opinions and borderline questions. I'm just a borderline person. Go, Joe. I might as well just live in Switzerland, right? True. Yep. <sighs> you might as well. <laughs> By the way, I hear nice things about Switzerland, though. I've been, yeah. I, I said this on Twitter nice, the other day. Right? I said this on Twitter the other day. The only reason why I want to go to Europe is I want to try bread from there. Because I hear that, so I hear that just the United States. Oh our yeah, bread, we should do like a food review. Our bread just f***ing sucks, is what I keep hearing. So I want to try like bread from France specifically. Oh my God, you actually have a piece of bread. What is wrong with you? Uh, when when you need it, at least it's there. And I'm driving. What do you expect, dude? <laughs> nice. Lower your head just a little bit, Jessica. Just lower your head down a little bit so that I can clip that. <laughs> All right. No, it's not that so, easy to. For those on see. audio, he is literally. Do I need a second? He's no, literally. No, you're good. A little you bit down. A little bit patch. down. A little bit down. Like just slinking your. Like, that is slink. false. Okay, I, I gotta I gotta hold it then. All right, cool. I can make an emote out of that. Uh, perfect. Um, just use that for mine. <laughs> don't, like, don't even bother. Just have just get two two Yiska wow. emotes. Yeah. <laughs> <It's way better. laughs> just no Joe ones. No. Just, Nobody Yiska wants with that. bread on his face, and then Everybody Yiska with that. his hat. Uh, Yiska, Joe, always a pleasure, by the way. Good to see you guys. We don't get to chat nearly enough throughout the week. Um, but honestly, you were totally uh, outstaged and overshadowed in every way by our uh. guest, Damon. You know, he gets like an applause, right? Just so good. So good. Really good guest. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know, um, man, you got to just, your head has to be a whirlwind with everything going on right now. Best of luck uh, to the Dallas Fuel for the rest of the season. Thank you. Uh, I hope that you continue to make stage playoffs and uh, the season playoffs and all that good stuff. And I really appreciated the just the honesty and transparency, especially, you know, as you went from, You've gone from so many different uh, positions, going from now head coach at Paris to uh, another coach at the Dallas Fuel, having to tell the head coach in Arrow that he is not the most handsome head coach. I mean, you know, you, there's just a lot going on for you right now. And, uh, you know, part of it is like you probably could have avoided that. And I really appreciated that you didn't avoid it on this show. Yeah, again, it goes back to what we were saying previously, you know, Kai Kai can be too, too uh, passionate and too transparent. And, you know, Damon, sometimes he can be too transparent, too. But you got to respect uh, him. You, yeah. you know what you're getting from him. And, you know, that's something endearing and hireable. That's something you really need to look for because he's not going to he's not going to you know lie to you. He's not going to BS you. Hireable. I love that adjective. That that's the most volatile adjective, by the uh, way. It's all right. Hireable. You know, 
This is just a bully <laughs> yeah. podcast. Oh man. Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, before we go, Damon, anything to say to your new brand new Dallas fuel fans who now are buying their Damon jerseys or I don't know, their Damon clipboards, I guess you're a coach. So like, that would what, be great. Yeah. No, like uh, I, I'm really, I'm really grateful again to join the team, not only for the, for the team itself, but as well for the fans. I know like that was incredible fans and I'm even more excited to cut the Dallas to meet them directly and feel directly how they're passionate about like the team, uh, Overwatch uh, especially, and just, yeah, try to get the grasp that, that I got in, in Paris. And even if like I'm French and weird, and again, French, I hope they're going to appreciate my sound, the team, and I will make my best to make this team great and good looking. Let's get it. <laughs> Hon yeah, honestly, let's, let's be real for a second. We've had a lot of guests on the show. I, yeah, and I'm going to just say this that. right now. Damon has is the best looking guest we've ever had on the show. That Thank bomber you. jacket is sick. I'm actually going to send you a message on Discord about where you got it because I'm going to get it. It's not going to fit you. Style. You're going to look like a German sausage, man, dude. You got to work out some more till then. F you. <laughs> We're also doing tryouts for a third uh, <laughs> co-host on Tactical Man's Crouch. Uh, we hope that you make it because, you know, honestly, you know, once one of your co-hosts reach rock bottom, you're all going to be better, right? <laughs> you're all going to I mean, it literally could be anybody. We could just like do a raffle at this point. And just, That's you the two hundred fifty dollar tier on the Patreon. You can have your own <laughs> episode. Should we, should we do a Patreon? I don't know. I like the idea of a Patreon, but we'll 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 talk about that later. That's yes, not what we're yes. talking about right now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here, chat. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out. Uh, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. Use that Amazon Prime. Subscribe to the channel. Support these guys. Help us afford a microphone for. Yiska, so that we don't have to hear him cough every 13 minutes. Like, just a reminder that this is live. Uh, yeah, other than that, follow us everywhere at tactical underscore crouch. And um, yeah, make sure to tune into Overwatch League. Cheer on the Dallas Fuel. All that good stuff. We're out of here, guys. See you next time. Episode 28, coming next week. I promise.